What is up guys? Welcome to Tap to Wake. For those of us second class citizens outside the US and China, we never had the opportunity of using Snapdragon powered Samsung flagship phones. So when the S20 FE 5G was announced to be using Snapdragon 865 globally, we thought that this would be the beginning of something new, a world without Exynos. We rejoiced, we were happy. But when the Exynos 2100 was announced, we were told that the new S21 lineup would be using this chipset in the global market. That brief moment of joy that we had was taken away from us. In typical Samsung fashion, only the United States and China would be getting the Snapdragon 888 powered S21s. Now historically, the Exynos variant of the same phone would always prove to be the inferior version. Spoiler alert, still is. I know that a lot of you guys out there are interested to know how the Snapdragon 888 performs against the Exynos 2100. So I have these two phones, the Mi 11 representing Team Snapdragon and the S21 representing Team Exynos. However, do take note that this comparison between these two SOCs might not be that accurate because these two phones are manufactured by a different phone manufacturers. But we can roughly expect a similar kind of performance from a phone that uses the same chipset should be in the same ballpark. Which is why I won't be testing out the battery or camera from these two phones because these are two different phones. The tests that I'm going to perform today focuses on the performance of the SoC. So raw CPU performance using Geekbench and also exporting 4K videos using Adobe Premiere Rush. GPU performance using 3 d Mark and playing a little bit of games, AI engine performance using AI Benchmark, and network speed tests around my area. Let's move on to the first test, Geekbench. I've run the benchmark three times and took the average from those three runs. I found something interesting. The eight cores in the Exynos 2100 is actually clocked higher than all the eight cores in the Snapdragon 888. So in theory, the Exynos 2100 should beat the Snapdragon 888 in terms of raw CPU performance. But the Snapdragon 888 consistently outperforms the Exynos 2100 in all three runs in both single core and multi-core tests. There are also unexplainable drops in score in both Snapdragon and Exynos's third run. Now we're going to test the GPU using 3 d Mark. The GPU inside the Snapdragon 888 is the Adreno 660, while the one inside the Exynos 2100 is the Mali G78. Both phones were set at full HD resolution and also 120 hertz refresh rate, and both are updated to their latest firmware. I noticed something interesting. When I did the wildlife stress test in 3 d Mark, in two out of three times, the Mi 11 was not able to complete the 20 loop test and I kept getting a message that the phone is overheating. The S21, on the other hand, did not have this issue. It was able to complete all 20 loops in all three runs. Now let's analyze the result. This image was the result from the third attempt, which both phones were able to complete successfully. If you look at the Adreno 660's performance in the Mi 11, it was able to maintain a pretty stable performance throughout all 20 loops with very little fluctuation. The Mali G78, on the other hand, had a very sharp drop in performance in the third attempt and pretty much stayed there until the end of the stress test. This might be some sort of a safeguard or threshold implemented by Samsung to make sure that the SOC in the S21 does not get too hot. This next set of data further solidifies my suspicion. The maximum temperature recorded on the Mi 11 is actually 7 degrees Celsius higher compared to the S21. So the Mi 11 allows itself to squeeze much more performance from the SOC compared to the S21, which results in the higher temperature. The Adreno 660 GPU is also able to maintain a much stable frame rate compared to the Mali G78. The plastic back of the S21 proves to be its Achilles heel. Glass is a better conductor of heat compared to polycarbonate, aka plastic. So in the case of the Mi 11, its temperature went down faster compared to the S21. So keep that in mind. The third test is exporting a 4K video from Adobe 
Adobe Premiere Rush. I used four sample 4K footage and exported it to a 1080p video. Because Adobe Premiere Rush charges you a ton of money to be able to export in 4K. So I had to resort to 1080p. As you can see from the video, both devices finished exporting at about the same time. So the performance difference here is quite negligible. The fourth test is gaming. I did a little bit of gaming by playing Genshin Impact on both phones for 30 minutes. And both phones were able to handle the graphically intensive game with flying colors, as expected from both of the top of the line chipsets. Both phones did get a little bit warm though, but it's not too bad. And the fifth test, I'm using an app called AI Benchmark that you can download from the Play Store. I'm using this app to gauge how well the AI engine in the Exynos 2100 performs against the Snapdragon 888. In my test, the Exynos 2100 finished later but was able to get a higher score. Now, why did this happen? I'm assuming that the Exynos 2100 was able to get a better balance between speed and accuracy when completing the tests inside this app. The tests that are included inside this app are object recognition, facial recognition, bokeh simulation, etc. The final test would be the network speeds. So both of these SOCs support 5G networks, but here in Malaysia, we don't have 5G networks yet. So I had to resort to just testing 4G networks around the area where I live. I was able to get around 16 megabits per second on the Mi 11 and 47.8 megabits per second on the S21. It's not that big of a difference and it's usually fast enough for most of the stuff that you usually do on smartphones like gaming and uh, watching Netflix. So what does this all mean? The Exynos 2100 is not a bad SOC. In fact, it has managed to reduce the gap with the top of the line Snapdragon SoC which in this case the Snapdragon 888 and there is no doubt that it's a flagship level chipset but you cannot avoid the fact that it's still behind the Snapdragon 888. If you're living in a region where you can't get the Snapdragon version of the S21, you shouldn't be too disappointed because it's still one of the best chipsets around. That's it for my video. Thank you for watching. And remember to subscribe to Tap to Wake and click that notification bell so that you'll get notified each time I upload amazing new content. I'll see you in the next one.